Good evening and welcome to DCU TV News. I'm Megan Conway and tonight we'll be looking at the top stories that have taken place across the university over the last two weeks. We'll also be looking at national news stories that directly affect DCU students. Our first story this evening looks at the controversial alcohol bill, which if implemented will set out minimum pricing. It's believed that minimum unit pricing will ban low-cost sales of alcoholic products. Our reporters Helen O'Neill and Adam Daly spoke to students to get their reaction. The amount of alcohol consumed at home in Ireland rose to 51% in 2016, according to the CSO. The proposed alcohol bill being discussed aims to set out a minimum pricing for alcohol in off-licences and bars. The bill also proposes warning labels to be put on alcoholic packaging. Under the new rules, Dutch gold will cost a minimum of €1.58. Guinness will cost €1.66. A bottle of Smirnoff ice will rise to €20.71. An off-licence worker said that the bill won't affect future sales as all retailers will be in the same boat and the habits of drinkers won't change. We spoke to students on campus on their thoughts. So. It would probably like drive more people to drugs because drugs are going to be cheap, like alcohol will probably be dearer than drugs so they're probably going to do that. I'm from the United States and alcohol is a lot more expensive here compared to the United States so uh, we're already kind of like being careful with money on, on that front, I guess. Uh, it probably would, yeah. I'd expect you, you'd probably end up pre-drinking a lot more and you wouldn't be going to the bar as much, you know, the pub trade's probably gone, so... Yeah, it probably would affect my decision. I, I suppose people, like especially students, don't have that much money to spend going out, so obviously if drink prices go up, then probably less people will go out. Well, people will still go out, but probably not as often, I'd say. Speaking to the owner of New Bar, he said that the minimum pricing legislation would not affect the business as their prices would never go that low. He also said that the second part of the legislation, which looks at putting warning labels on bottles and cans, would not come into effect in New Bar as they would each have to put on the labels manually. Helen O'Neill, DCU TV News. Seasonal affective disorder is a mood disorder which can affect people around the winter months. People who would usually have normal mental health throughout most of the year exhibit depressive symptoms most commonly in winter. Colin McKay reports. Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, is classed as a mood disorder associated with the changing of seasons. SAD is Seasonal Affective Disorder, so <coughs> if students don't know from this time of year with the seasonal changes, uh, some students may get uh, this kind of form of depression, so it's into the depression due to the seasonal changes, due to the cold, the lack of light, um, with, it's usually around winter. Yeah, any student could be affected by it, um, and it, it, there's a recent study done in America that was one in 20 students are actually fully fetched, with, well, fully diagnosed with SAD. Uh, seasonal affective disorder, and I think a lot of students don't know what it is, um, especially students who would have it because they wouldn't realise um, why they're feeling down. And if you notice in a friend, uh, take that seriously, uh, act sooner rather than later. Uh, simple things such as add more light into your house because often it's due to the lack of light in the surrounding area. Um, maybe invest in some sort of an alarm, sorry, a lamp system that turns off 30 minutes after you fall asleep and turns on 30 minutes before you wake up in the morning so you're waking up to light so you might be happier at uh, exercise. Properly, um, and friends. We asked students if they experience an effect and what they think of the change of season. So it's not about seasons, but it's more it's more about like a new lifestyle or something like that. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I do. Like loads gets cold and just no motivation to do work. So yeah, bit sad, isn't it? No, no, I like winter. Enjoying it, man. You know, I got the scarf out. I've got my winter chic. I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Not sad at all. But I don't really find much of a difference between summer and winter in terms of the sad concept. Although, some students found a bright side to the seasonal change. Nice. It's dark. <laughs> nah, there's less light. You can't do any activities. Football is over for the year. It is a depressing time of the year. You can start drinking earlier because it's dark out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Colin McCahey, DCU TV News. The recently approved redevelopment of the Phippsborough Shopping Centre will also see the construction of over 340 student beds. Dublin City Council approved the €50 million Euro plan earlier this month. Rachel Martin and Shauna Cohen spoke to students about the costs of accommodation. Often named as one of the ugliest buildings in Dublin, the Phippsborough Shopping Centre is getting a makeover. New apartments that are expected to accommodate 340 students are set to be developed in Phippsborough as part of the 50 million euro redevelopment of the 1960 shopping centre. The scheme was approved by the council this month and was welcomed by DCU Student Union. Yeah, new summer accommodation is always welcome in Phippsborough so close. It'd be fantastic for us, but the only thing I'd worry about is the pricing of it. Um, like if you compare it to the one on Mill Street, 
uh, that is for students, but it's 249 euro a week. So what I'd be worried about is, will it be priced for a reasonable amount for a student, or will it be overpriced? The price of student accommodation, however, is a concern, seen as recent developments have rooms in Dublin costing a minimum of €249 Euro a week. It's absolutely not fair, like from my experience of renting, I'm really, really struggling, especially around times like Christmas when everything's so much more expensive, gives you buy presents and all this. But I think the sad fact of it is, is that if you go to college in Dublin, Dublin is just an expensive place to live anyway, not just for students, for anyone buying them or renting. So yeah, I mean, I think unfortunately just living in the capital is always going to be that bit more expensive. I'm lucky in the sense I still live at home, but I have to commute to college daily and I find that expensive. So I can't imagine how people are affording to live like away from home because they have to pay for their food and everything as well. My mom pays for all that for me. Uh, I know I wouldn't be able to afford it anyway. Definitely way too expensive. Um, even now with all the new um, accommodation centres popping up, they're like extortionate still. So even though there's more and more becoming available, it's, it's still out of the reach of a lot of people. And it's definitely taking advantage of students as well because they know that they're desperate for accommodation and will do anything to be near their college. So even though there's more now and it seems like people are doing more for it, I mean they could do more in terms of pricing and making it more affordable in general. Although many of the local people here are excited and supportive of the idea of the development, some of them are concerned that the arrival of more students will also result in the arrival of more fast food restaurants, especially when there is already an abundance of them here in Pipsborough. Rachel Martin, DCU TV News. The St Vincent de Paul Christmas Giving Tree has been stationed in a students' union where students are welcome to leave toys and gifts under the tree. Alex Dunn and Michelle Townsend tell us about how students can get involved. St Vincent de Paul and DCU have teamed up as part of their annual Christmas giving campaign by bringing the SVP Giving Tree to the University. The tree features special star-shaped tags with each tag listing a person and age group such as teenage boy, adult, baby girl and so on. Donators take a tag from the tree and leave a gift for that person underneath with all the gifts being donated to the charity. Giving trees are positioned in the student union offices on all three of DCU's campuses and students have until the 30th of November to donate gifts. With even more families in need of support across the nation this year, the charity are looking to make Christmas a little brighter for those in need in communities countrywide. The St Vincent de Paul Giving Tree here in DCU is part of a nationwide campaign and for those of you that can't get involved here, can get involved at your local SVB charity shop. Alex Dunn, DCU TV News. And finally to sport, DCU women's soccer team faced news last week at St Pat's. Despite three goals by the DCU side, it wasn't enough to steal the win. Our reporters Colleen Brady, Shauna Cohn and Anya Connolly report. The cold and cloudy weather wasn't enough to stop the DCU women's soccer team from displaying a great performance in their league match on Tuesday. However, despite their best efforts, the home side suffered a narrow defeat in Minute in the CULF Premier Division of the Rustlers League. DCU had a strong start with Amber Barrett scoring the standout goal of the game in the first 15 minutes. However, Manu kept them on their feet looking dangerous throughout the first half. Naima Chuawi's foot from the back of the net sending both teams into the dressing room for half-time level with a 2 all draw. The second half saw both camps upping the tempo in an effort to secure their win. Manu had the upper hand securing the first goal off the half. The DCU side didn't let this set them back and continued to put up a fight. However, the Minute team proved that they were the better side, finishing the game with a strong goal from Lauren Riley. The game ended 4-3 to Minute. Despite DC's best efforts, they were unsuccessful in their game against Minute. Minute's All-Ireland goalkeeper had a great performance throughout the game, and Minute took more chances. We spoke to a Minute player to get her reaction from the game. It was a good game. Um, I didn't think DCU had a had a like a good team, but they had a very good team, strong players, very uh, very very competitive. They are. You have Amber coming in now from Manute University, and she has a lot of experience. And even for the other girls, they have like Carly I saw and um, Jade Reddy and Lynn and all them. Even Ashling, the captain there, just very strong team. It was very impressive to come and play against. You know. That's all for this evening. Be sure to tune in next time for our last broadcast of the semester. Remember you can keep up with news throughout the week on Facebook and on Twitter at DCU TV News. I'm Megan Conway. Good evening.